morning, all. Try and keep you up. My, uh, my microphone has got a little short in here. There we go. Good morning. Well, welcome, all. It's a delight to welcome you all to worship this morning. Thank you for being a part of this. Uh, particularly, we're grateful for our visitors and guests. We're glad that you're here and glad that if you need anything, please let us know. We'd be delighted to help. There are large buttons, and there's also hearing assistance devices. So if that helps you, let us let us one of us know, and we'll be able to work it out. There's a restroom in the vestibule, should you need that at any time as well. Uh, meanwhile, as we're gathering, and I've got just a few announcements, if you wouldn't mind to fill out the red pew folder, it uh, looks like this. Uh, Marlon has got it right here. There should be a red pew folder somewhere on the edge of your pew. If you wouldn't mind to fill that out, that'll be a delight to welcome you. If you give us contact information, no one will spam you, but uh, if you if there's anything that I can do to help you in any way, please let me know, and the best way to reach you, and I will certainly make contact this week. Hi. I wanted to say a special welcome to all of our web viewers. As you know, Union Church broadcasts live on the uh, internet as well as have it recorded services. So thanks to our video crew for working that all out. And thanks to you all for watching. We're thinking about you. Uh, I know a lot of folks who have been part of the church community watch, a lot of people who are just crossing the internet and finding the right thing that uh, they need. We hope that the spirit here rises and meets you where you are. So we're thinking about all of our loved ones and we're thinking about those of you who've joined us new. Uh, you'll find on the web that there is a little uh, sign-in sheet down below and we would love to have your comments and we would love to know that you're there so if you don't care go ahead and sign that out and if you're watching online you should find a link there to the bulletin if you'd like to follow along with the other announcements and prayers Uh, as I've uh, been mentioning just the last few weeks, you may have come and found that the parking lot at the end of the Kettering Drive is blocked off. That's because they will soon begin taking down that dormitory. That's going to mean some construction around here. So just uh, to, if you're here during the week, you should be aware that the college is blocking off a lot of their college parking. So you may need to adjust they're welcoming us at the tavern and on street parking, of course. And then once school is out in four or five months, it'll be a little easier because there won't be as much competition for traffic. But in the meanwhile, please be, be cognizant, be careful, and uh, just uh, be tolerant. There are going to be about two years of construction that will be going on there. The, uh, and someone said, well, why are they doing that? It looks like a perfectly good dorm. Yes, it's a perfectly good dorm that is sliding down the hill. So uh, they decided that they'll be moving it forward closer to our building, uh, the, the new dorm. So just so you know, just so you know. I wanted to thank all of you who came to our Union Church Day at the legislature. We had a wonderful opportunity to meet with our legislators. We had a great chance to sort of work with the Kentucky Council of Churches. We worked specifically on prayers to end gun violence and had some great briefings. I wanted to, we had about 20 people come and so thanks be to God for all of your hard work and labor in that regard. I can report too uh, that uh, from our Kentucky Council of Churches partners that there is a bill that you may wish to know about. It's certainly one that the Kentucky Council is very concerned about. It's called HB1 and it would cut social services. It would cut food stamps. It would cut Medicaid benefits. And the worst thing about it is that it would all impose a lifetime ban on ever receiving those even if there was one error or one mistake made. So the, so the situation being that, for example, uh, it imposes new rules about what you can and cannot purchase with food stamps, including you can't have sugary drinks. And if you were to buy, let's say, uh, not more than 9% of your budget, uh, it would impose the state will have to build at cost of hundreds of millions of dollars a reporting mechanism. But then let's say you buy an extra six pack for a child's party. That would mean at 80 years old, you would be banned for life from ever receiving Medicaid to be in a nursing home. It's not well done. It's a poor bill. If you'd like to have more information, you can call me, or there's some information, I think, on the back table. Um, but certainly encouraging our legislators to oppose such draconian means is probably the Christian thing to do. I, I, I think all of them are trying to find ways to balance budgets, but we can't balance it on the back of the poor. That is the, that is the way of Christ. So. Uh, the other news, uh, we are doing wonderful community work, and one of our members, uh, Suna Fredrickson, has always helped us welcome Danish, uh, Danish guests. We have Danish students coming the end of March. Uh, Suna, remind me the date. 
22nd of March to the 26th of March. If you'd be willing to host two, uh, one or two students in your home, you need a couple more people to host. Uh, it's a wonderful experience. We have done it and uh, really hope that you'll take the opportunity. It's a great way to, to make a connection across the seas and to be that loving community. Uh, we have a few people in our prayers, and I would invite your prayers for them. As, first of all, we always pray around the world for those in the country, uh, countries around the world. Today's countries, we're praying for the peoples of France, of Germany, and of Monaco, and our brothers and sisters also in our local churches. Today, we're praying for those who are members and friends of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Their steakhouse is in Richmond, but they have a lot of folks in the Berea area, so we're thinking about all of them. We're remembering, of course, all the people that you'll see listed in your bulletin, and I hope during prayer time you'll have a moment to read through those and just hold those folks in the light of your prayers and of your love. Particularly today, though, I would ask your prayers for Sally Zimmerman. Sally fell last week on her way to church on the ice, broke her shoulder in three places. Uh, so Sally, if you're watching it, she's at home now. She spent a little time in the hospital. She's at home, and we're, we're working together, together with her family to get uh, all the services that she might need. We might need some food. Uh, we might need a meal train, so keep your ears open. We'll send word out through the email just in case. But Sally, if you're watching, we're thinking about you and praying for a swift healing in that regard. Uh, we've also had a good round of people who are ill, and there are probably some in the room who have friends and or colleagues who may be affected by the coronavirus, so we're thinking about all of those people as well. Uh, the best possible thing you can do for yourself and for others is to continue to wash your hands. Wash your hands, wash your hands. What? What would you like to do? Yes, you'd like to wash your hands. How lovely. Yes, that's a good idea. Yeah, you can really interrupt the disease cycle. It's the best possible thing. So thanks to all of our public nurses, public health nurses who are helping us remember. We have a few other folks that I would like to invite prayers for. Um, in particular, uh, would like to have prayers for uh, Hazel Morris's family in the death of her cousin, Bill Jean Smith, who passed away this uh, just last night. So we're thinking of, of her and thinking of, of, of him. The evergreen on the altar reminds us that God's love is with us through all those hard times. We've placed that evergreen there for him and also for another friend of the church who many of you may, may not remember, Cornelia Spring, who was Janet and Chad Spring's daughter. Uh, she passed away suddenly of a stroke in Pasadena, and her husband called to let us know. She often comes through when they're driving through country because her parents were such beloved friends here, and they, uh, they have been very gracious to the church, and we're so sorry for her loss. And finally, I'd like to, the final person we're remembering today is Father John Rausch, who passed away very suddenly at his home of a parent heart attack. Uh, John Rausch was one of the very first people who welcomed me to Berea when I first came to be a part of the Berea community. He was working at that time with Amherst, where Terry had also been a uh, part of the staff there. He was a tireless, tireless worker for environmental justice. He was on the staff of the diocese. He organized tours about mountaintop removal. He taught people what the destruction of God's creation meant to God's people, that it affected more than just the trees and the rocks and the streams, but that all of those things affect all of us. And of course, he was vitally concerned that it hurt the poor the hardest. So we have lost a great light, but we walk in the light that he left us. And so I'd like this justice candle today for Father John Rausch, who is gone but not forgotten. May he rest in peace and in power. Well, my friends, I invite you also to rest in this place, to find sanctuary here, to find some respite, but also to find some challenge. They too usually come together. So may you find them in right measure as we let our musicians carry us today in meditation and in song as you let words surround you and as the Spirit of God rises within you. May you be blessed and may we be a blessing to each other. Amen.
integrity requires that I discern what is integral to my selfhood, what fits and what does not, and that I choose life-giving ways of relating to the forces that converge within me. Do I welcome them or fear them? Embrace them or reject them? Move with them or against them? By choosing integrity, I become more whole. But wholeness does not mean perfection. It means becoming more real by acknowledging the whole of who I am. Today, I choose to live by choice, not by chance. To make changes, not excuses. To be motivated, not manipulated. To be useful, not used. To excel, not compete. I choose self-esteem, not self-pity. I choose to listen to the inner voice, not the random opinion of others. Today we gather to remind ourselves of those commitments. Our commitments not just to self, but our commitments that come to self from a loving God who seeks the highest, best, greatest good that we could possibly offer both to each other and to the world. Let us gather together for we are indeed gathered to remind ourselves of that integral peace, that integral power, the integral dignity of serving together in Christ's way. Won't you rest on your feet and let us sing together our opening hymn. You are salt of the earth, O oh people, salt for the city of God. you turn to your neighbor right and left and offer them a sign of that peace. You are salt and light, my friends. It's a delight to be with you.
My friends, we are richly blessed. Uh, as you can see in the, in, in the angel loft up there, that the choir is joined by the orchestra today. So I invite you to be at peace in your pews as we continue our worship together. The Hebrew scripture lesson for today comes from the book of Deuteronomy. You can read along um, in your pew Bibles. The passage is on page 236. In this moment, Moses is speaking to the Israelites as he steps aside as the spiritual leader of uh, the people and gives them a message about continuing their faith into the future to come. See, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I am commanding you today by loving the Lord your God, walking in his ways and observing his commandments, decrees, and ordinances. Then you shall live and become numerous. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you do not hear, 
but are led astray to bow down to other gods and serve them. I declare to you today that you shall perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying him, and holding fast to him. For that means life to you and length of days, so that you may live in the land that the Lord swore to give you to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Those in the room who help us make good choices all the time, I would like to welcome you up here to the front. Come if you're young, come if you're young at heart, come join us up here and we'll talk a little bit about all sorts of good choices. Stools under there, help yourselves. Grab some more if we need them. If we need them. Are you you're, you're sitting under the stool. You're not you're okay. All right then. Well, it takes it takes many it takes many kinds. Hello. Well, thank you all for being here, you all. Uh, okay, let's see. If you had a choice between, let's say, um, broccoli stew or chocolate ice cream, what would you choose? <laughs> Broccoli stew, obviously, right? Yeah, sure, sure, absolutely. Uh, who, who likes chocolate ice cream, right? And those who would choose the broccoli stew? We've got a couple, all right, very good. Okay, so let's think about, um, if you could choose walking without a coat in a really, 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 really rainy, horrible, cold day, or standing by the fire where it's warm and cozy petting your kitty cat, who would choose the kitty cat? Walking really, really, really far in a really, really cold, rainy day. Rainy day, we got a few rainy day people, excellent, okay, very good. Yeah, you like rainy days? Okay, well see, all right. You know, life is full of choices, but some of them are just not that easy, right? It might be really clear to you that you would definitely prefer the rain, or you would definitely prefer the broccoli, or you would definitely prefer the chocolate. But sometimes, children, I'm telling you, the choices are a little harder, right? Like, who would like to have the broccoli soup versus who would like to have the asparagus soup. Mm. Or it can be good too, it can be the other way. It can be like, would you rather spend the afternoon by the fire with a kitty or would you rather spend it outdoor playing with the dog, right? And I like both, so it could be either one. Sometimes the choices, sometimes the choices are harder, aren't they? And I'm telling you, they get that way for your parents, too. Sometimes they have good choices, and sometimes they're easy. Like, it's clear. You, you, really? You like that best? You like onions. Yeah, you take the stew. Yeah. Well, exactly. But sometimes there are choices that we have to make that are good for one thing, but not good for another. Right? Like, okay, you might not like broccoli, but it's healthy for you. Exactly. That's exactly right. It's good for you. And you don't have to always, always, always have the broccoli, but you can't never have the broccoli. You got to have some broccoli. Into each life, some broccoli must fall. It's a good thing. Or must grow, right? And, and it's wonderful if you like it, but even if you don't like it, you probably should have a little. You should probably have a little broccoli. Why is that? Yeah, you, you, it's healthy for you. You need the stuff that's in the broccoli to grow. You need vitamins, you need chlorophyll, you need green growing things, right? You need health stuff. 
you know what? That is exactly what, what God was telling the people in this story. You guys need health stuff. Listen, he says, I set before you the ways of broccoli and chocolate ice cream. Choose the broccoli. Choose the broccoli. Choose the stuff that gives you strength in the long run, right? Now, you don't, that doesn't mean you have to give up on the, on the ice cream, but you probably can't make three meals a day out of it. Because if you do, you will be sick. You will be sick, sick, sick. You will not be well. You will not feel good. It will be not good for you, right? What, uh, what the Israelites got told, this was right before they got to enter into the promised land, was, hey, you guys, make good choices. Make good choices. What's a good choice? What, what do you think God was telling the people to make a good choice about? Not broccoli, obviously. What? Being kind. Being kind, exactly. What else do you think God was, would say? You, yeah, you, no one's including them, right? You, you, you should help someone if they're upset. You should help somebody if no one's welcoming them or accepting them or letting them play, right? This is a good choice. Absolutely. What's another one? Yeah. Be honest. Be honest. That's like what, what uh, Miss Gail was talking about at the beginning. You know, that integrity thing, that's a big word, but that integrity is about say what you're doing, do what you say. That's being honest with yourself and being honest with the world. What's another? Go ahead. Be upset? No, not upset. Accepting, be accepting. Yes, be accepting. That's perfect. That's right. Be accepting. Yeah, that's a good choice. What about you? What's that? Listen to your parents. That's a really good choice, right? Almost all the time. Almost all the time. Yeah, no, no, it's a very good time. Right, right, exactly, right. You've got to help your parents make good choices too, right? You've got to help your parents make good choices, yes. And help others. And, oh, see you guys, this is exactly what I'm talking about. And while you know exactly what you, how that looks like right now, just keep looking for it as you get older, right? Just keep looking for the ways to make honest, loving, accepting, loving, good choices. Right? Because sometimes it's going to matter, like it might be the health of your family. It might be that somebody needs something that feels a little uncomfortable at first, but it's for the health of everybody. Or it could be the health of the school, right? So sometimes we make those choices. Think. Use your brain. God gave you a good brain. Use your brain. Use your good heart. God gave you a good heart. Put them together. Always make sure. That, and then make good choices. What God says is choose the thing that is best Choose the stuff that is loving. Choose that which is, which is helpful and kind. All of that. You guys are so smart. Thank you. See, you're already helping us make good choices. Don't you think so? Yeah. All right, then. Well, what should we pray for today? What's on your hearts and minds? What do we need to include? Yes, ma'am. Yeah? Oh, amen. Your dad got here safely? Thanks be to God. Absolutely. Yes, what would you like to pray for? Ah, you'd like to pray for a little more ice cream. No, oh, no, no ice cream. Okay, all right, good. All right, for the right kinds of good food. All right. For your dead great-grandfather, we will remember him today. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, ma'am. Sick people and sick pets, both, because they both are in our hearts. Yeah, what would you like? Oh, your sister found a job. Hallelujah. Okay, yes. Prayers of thanksgiving. Anybody else? Anybody else got anything? We're good? Yeah. Endangered animals. Amen. You know, so many are dying, and, we're, that's, and some of that's because we've made bad choices, right? So much of our, of our world is dying because we weren't making good choices, so we've got to make good choices so we can save them. Absolutely. Absolutely. And those who've already gone, let, amen. Amen. Like dinosaurs, exactly. All right, well, would you join us as we pray? Let's all pray. And let's, uh, let's, we'll be praying to make good choices, but we'll also be holding all of these thoughts in our prayers, right? Everything that you guys pray for matters. 
Everything matters. You matter. You do. Let us pray. Oh, Lord, thank you for all the good choices that have supported us and made us healthy from others. Now help us make good choices. Help these guys make good choices now and every day, all their lives, Lord. Help them choose what makes them strong and healthy and wise and happy. Help them choose what helps others be wise and strong, too. Lord, we please look after our family members, both the ones we care about here and the ones who have gone on to be with you. Be present with all of our animals and pets and friends and all the critters of this world who are endangered. Lord, please look after everybody who needs a little kindness, who needs a little acceptance. Lord, we ask you to bless and keep us all that we might enter into a new future, a promised land where nobody hurts and nobody's sad and nobody has to wonder if they'll have enough. We help us get there by the choices we make, Lord. This we ask in Christ's name. And everybody said, amen. Thanks, you guys. Thanks for being such good theologians. reading. Our gospel reading today comes from the gospel of Matthew. I encourage you to put your crash helmet on and buckle up. Jesus is preaching to the assembled crowd on the, on the mount. This is uh, from the passage of Matthew, typically understood as the Sermon on the Mount. Here, herein is our words. Jesus says to the crowds, you have heard it said to those of ancient times, you shall not murder. And whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that if you are even angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say, you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. So when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your sister or your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are on the way to court with him, or your accuser may hand you over to the judge, and the judge to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Truly, I tell you, friends, you will never get out until you have paid the very last penny. You have heard it said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. And if your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It's better for you to lose one of your members than your whole body to go to the hellfire. It was also said, Jesus told them, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that anyone who divorces his wife, except on the grounds of unchastity, causes her to commit adultery, and whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. And again, you have heard it said that it was said of those ancient times, you shall not swear falsely, but carry out the vows you have made to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, either by heaven or by earth. Do not swear at all by heaven, for it's the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is the footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make one hair on it, white or black. Let your word be yes, yes, or no, no. Anything more than this comes from the evil one. Here ends the reading of the word. Let us pray. Holy One, about these words, help us make wise and good choices. Help us choose the life that is contained therein. Help us in our meditations, in our worries, in our hopes. Find the light that you intend. And may we act on such light, Lord, now and in the week to come. This we ask in Christ's name. Amen.
Now, I want to start off by saying that I'm a divorced person. I want to start off by saying that I have been angry with my brother a lot, a lot. I want to also start off by saying to you that I have seen people who looked really good. And I have not always thought just loving thoughts about them. I want you to know that I think Jesus knew that every one of us in this room couldn't pass any one of these particular tests, if that's what they are. I'm not certain that they were meant to be tests. I'm not certain that they were meant to be this idea of how you should account for the righteousness of others as much as it was encouragement to each of us to choose the higher righteousness for each of us. What if, what if Jesus were really reminding us all high and mighty about how good we were to have gotten up this morning, made it to church on time, maybe even a little early, that's right, got here early, yeah, I did, because uh, I love the Lord, yeah. And I'm feeling good about that. I'm feeling good about how I have, uh, I've, also, I've also put some money in the plate. And, I'm, and I, uh, there was a, a person on the street who was clearly not doing as well as me, and I smiled at him. I did. That's right. And I'm feeling all good about my righteousness, and I'm feeling all good about my relationship with the Lord, and I'm feeling all right about my place in that coming kingdom that I know Jesus wants us all to get to, and I'm feeling great about that. And then Jesus says, um, excuse me, I realize that you've not actually stabbed anybody. But I feel like until you can get to the point where you are not gonna want to stab somebody, that maybe you are not yet arrived. <laughs> Jesus is reminding us that we have places to go, that we are not, shouldn't be, can't be, cannot afford to be super complacent about our super righteousness when we are kind of super sad in a lot of other aspects of our life. Amen? Amen. By way of confession, there's just a lot here that all of us would say, that's, wow, that's impossible, and I've gotten used to my eyes and my hands, and I don't want to cut them off. And I want to say again, clearly, Jesus was a master rhetorician. Jesus is making a point. Jesus is not making a law. Right? Do you believe that the Jesus who healed the lepers who'd been cast out, believed to have been sinful, who heals them and takes them in, would, would, would go back to those same lepers and say, yeah, those hands, chop them off. That eye, pluck it out. That love that you found after a terrible, a terrible early life, discard it. No. No, none of us can imagine that. No, and scripture doesn't support it either. No, this is a speech. Let's not forget. Let's not forget that not every word is meant to be heard the same, right? There are some things that are meant to inspire us. There are other things that are meant to guide our actions, of course. And there are other things that are there as poetry for life and beauty. This one is probably the one meant to take us down a peg in our own sense of righteousness and build us up, inspire us towards taking those next steps towards what is best, holy, and right. Just like in Deuteronomy, to choose the life to choose the life-giving. One by one, they're pretty easy. The, the, the scripture about being angry with each other, that's a call for you to understand yourself and to take the first step towards reconciliation. Before you try to get good with God, get right with your neighbor. That's good inspiration for us all. As far as lust goes, well, human beings have been at it for a long time and we're getting pretty good. But it's what we do with it. If lust or any greedy passion 
becomes the center of our life, if that's if self-gratification versus the loving and caring and tending of the needs of others gets in front, it's a terrible, terrible cart before the horse situation. Love has to guide us. Love which holds the best interest of others in its, in its hands. And the same is true in this very sort of interesting and technical thing about divorce. Now, in Jesus' day, divorce was a matter for men. Only men could divorce. It was not easy, let alone much possible, for women to bring a writ of divorce. And Jesus even says, you have heard it said that Moses would let you, but I'm here to tell you that what's been put together can't easily be separated, so be careful. Be careful. Because he says, the way that this, you have set up this system is cruel to those who have no power in it. How ironic then that nearly all of these, but certainly this one, has been turned against people over and over again. Is divorce good? Oh no. And believe me, there were days going through mine that I would have preferred to have been thrown into the pit of hell. It was not easy. It was not simple. But neither do I believe that God abandoned me or my former wife. That's not what this is about. This was about the care for those who are powerless, the care that goes beyond just your own needs. In, in Jesus' day, men could do it, women couldn't. Men could do it with no witnesses. Women were bound into families of often incredible cruelty because there was no way out. And this is what Jesus was making a protest about. It's a reminder to all of us that the, the power and the privilege that we accumulate, however it comes, whether it be by virtue of our birth or by virtue of our work or by virtue of our position in a job or a place of schooling, it matters what we do with that power. And Jesus says, you people who've had power and been cavalier about it and have hurt others with it and have used that power to design systems that keep you there but keep others out, that won't fly. That cannot fly in the kingdom of God. That may fly in the kingdom of Herod, that might fly in the kingdom of Trump, that might fly in the kingdom of Clinton, that might fly in all the kingdoms that you have built for yourselves, but that will not fly. For the kingdom built by God, where the first are the ones who serve the least, where the last are the ones that get to go to the front of the line, where the naked get clothed, and they get clothed by the people around them who care and notice and pay attention. Choose life, Jesus says. Choose the, the power that gives life and then use your power to help others have the choice at all. Maybe the last one is the hardest one. Thou shalt not swear falsely. And I don't think he's talking about just using the Lord's name in vain or like, oh God, that was the most best chocolate cake I ever had. God, that was the best broccoli soup I ever had. That's not what this is about. I don't think God could care less about how you use that name that way. But when you say that you want to live in the path of Jesus, when you make baptismal vows or you renew them or you step up and you say, I'm a Christian and I want to put that word into the world, but then you step over your neighbor or your brother, you have sworn falsely. When you say that you want to live lives of kindness and that you care for children, and you care for some children close to you, but you forget to care about the children of other people far away, you have sworn falsely. I have sworn falsely. When we say we love this world, and isn't that sunset beautiful? and this clean, clear water that comes out of my tap, I'm so grateful for. When I say that, but then I permit or raise no protest 
When people pour toxins and waste and all the plastic that I have wrapped my precious and cozy life in and tear it up and pour it back into the oceans and into our rivers so that none of us can drink it, I have sworn falsely. I have said one thing and I have done another. This is Jesus' challenge to all of us. This is Jesus' rebuke. Yes, it's there. But the inspiration is the reminder that a better world is possible and that by our choices, we can bring it about. This is where Jesus reminds the people in the next passages, right, that stopping is the first step, but then stopping the bad is the first step, but then bringing about the love is the second. And it's possible. In 1973, Whale populations in Juneau had dropped to fewer than 25 animals. Those humpback whales had decreased to 25 is all we could count. And National Geographic made a recording underwater with a recently invented hydrophone, underwater microphone, and they put that in a National Geographic magazine on one of those floppy little records that you could print and send out in the mail. Do you remember this? It was a song of the humpback whale. They put that out there, told people about how the numbers had been killed, declined, captured, hunted to near extinction. That single floppy vinyl record galvanized millions of school children who made a choice who made a choice for life, and millions of their teachers who encouraged them and they wrote letters and they called Congress, and then millions of their parents joined, and they started thinking and they started acting, and that, that act resulted in the Marine Mammal Protection Act that has seen whale populations rebound 10, 50, 60, in some cases 100-fold. It's restored not just the whales, but the ecosystems around the whales upon which depended the full interaction. My friends, we have saved the whales. We have saved the whales. Whale populations in Juneau are now up to 25,000. It is possible. Our choices can bring life. We have stopped the ozone hole until just recently by choices that we made. We have stopped poisonous practices by corporations until ever so recently with choices that we have made. Choose life, for when we do, it's not just about advancing our own self-interest, but about building that kingdom of grace and commitment and compassion that I trust and know Jesus meant for us all. It is possible. Are you discouraged? You could be, and nobody could blame you. You turn on the news, you listen to the radio. This weekend alone, there were three separate instances where if I'd had any hair, I would have torn it out. It just felt like every step forward, there were two steps back. And it can feel that way. And it's a reminder that people in Jesus' day felt that way too. And I think even Jesus himself probably had that moment when he asked, oh, how long, oh Lord, how long? But if our prayers drift toward lament, our actions must drift toward hope. Our actions can make a world of difference. So if your family is torn by strife and you have an enmity with somebody, the power of taking that step towards reconciliation is incalculable for you, for you. Maybe it brings about the happy harmony that you hope for, but for you, it changes the nature of reality in your heart. It heals you to be a person of reconciliation because that is how God meant us to be. It heals you. Whether or not it changes the scope of their elected officials or the legislature, it heals you to take a positive act, uh, activity to call someone out and ask them to do what is right. It heals you. It heals me to do it. 
because it means that I am no longer a victim. I am no longer a passive participant, but rather an active living stone of hope in a world that needs them. And that hope is, the trust is, that grain by grain, rock by rock, stone by stone, we build up a marker for peace and justice and hope and love and compassion and whole families and healed bodies. Together we do that together. So does Jesus have hard words today? I did warn you about the helmet. Yes, because the world can get itself into a hard place, and you and I can get ourselves into bad places ourselves. So take this not as condemnation, which leads you to the place of despair, being stuck there. Take this as inspiration and reminder that that better world is possible. Take this as, as admonition. Choose well, choose often, choose love, choose wisdom, choose compassion, choose mercy. When you've got a choice, choose life and life-giving aspects for you. Add those to the choices of your neighbors and friends. Add them to the choices we make together. We have saved the whales, I told those in Frankfurt this week. Surely we can save our souls. Surely we can save the soul of our communities. Surely we can save those who suffer through no fault of their own from the sins, our sins of poverty, our sins of injustice, our sins of cruelty, our choices that have endangered so much of God's creation and so many of God's people. A lot of questions about what it means to be a Christian these days and whether it's worth it. And I can't answer the second part. But to, but to be a Christian, it seems to me, is to be people who take seriously the idea that there is more to do and that we can and that when we do, that life comes to not just us but to others. So this day, find your own integrity. Lift your own heart. Lift your own heart to the hard work and the heart work that Jesus sets before us. And let us see, let us just see if some of these challenges might just not be the goad and guide we need. Holy One, we come to you knowing we have fallen far short of the mark. Inspire Goad, grace, and guide us that we might come closer yet to the love you intend. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Today, as we enjoy our prayers and as we enter a time when we can be more active with them, I invite you to be at prayer and to think about how is it that you need to live? What, if any, changes do you need to make? We also have a chance to inspire our own generosity, all of which makes a difference in this world and around the church life and the community life and indeed the world through the benevolences that you make possible. And over here, a reminder and a lament. The stones pile up and they fall down and we put them back again. You're invited to take a stone and put it up there. And if it rolls down, put another one up there. Let's raise slowly this honoring honorific this monument to what we hope. In the back on the service and action table, you'll see ways that you can engage the world. There's some information about some ways we might be compassionate outside the building in terms of bills or in terms of food that we might offer and bless. And there's hearts back there. It being a Valentine's Day uh, weekend, I invite you to take a heart from one of the tables to remind yourself of your pledge to yourself, your pledge to God. Let us be at peace. As Gail rings the peace bell, let us fall silent together in the presence of God, knowing that we're always there. But give yourself the gift of attending to it in this moment. Let us pray. Let us pray.
Lord of high standards and greater grace. When we come to you, we often come bearing the burden of how short we fall of your expectation. So this we ask and this we pray. Keep us inspired to be better. Keep us strengthened to try again. And remind us that your love is not punishment, but promise. The promise of a better world and a better way. When we are hurt and hurting others, heal our hearts and turn us again toward the light. Whenever our power or privilege gives us power over others, give us also the power of mercy, of wisdom, of love bigger than our faults. We aspire to greatness in your way, Lord. By your care, may we be both careful and caring in your world. This we pray in the way Jesus taught us as we reach to you as our Maker, our Mother, and our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Hymn number 581 is our closer and a reminder. A reminder that we are not yet done, but we are on the way, my friends. Won't you rise and sing with us?
choose the best broccoli you can. Find that which strengthens you body, mind, and soul. Eat half. Give half to someone else. And may the God who chooses you, who chooses peace, who chooses life, who chooses mercy, who chooses grace, who chooses love for you, guide you and grace you, care for you, mark your steps, and lift your heart, that together we may enter in to the promised future intended for all. Go, my friends, go in peace. Go this day for our worship is over and our service begins. Amen.